Good afternoon. Welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we have on Jeff Turner. Jeff is from the Cockney Rejects, legendary band. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thanks, Sean. Yeah, it's very uh, nice and hot here in England at the minute for the summer, <laughs> which don't happen very often. But it's, uh, yeah, and they're giving out weather warnings and we're all going to die. Don't go outside. <laughs> have plenty of sun, uh, sun cream and drink water. Just <laughs> what to do, what we've always done. <laughs> what, uh, so, what's, the, what's the temperature there right now? Uh, at the moment, well, it, 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 it's really funny. It's about 27, 28, but they're saying that uh, on, on Monday it could get as high as 40 or something, which is, you know, a big deal. <laughs> yeah, because you guys are different. We're, we're uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius, so we're – because here it's like 85 right now, which is different yeah. than probably closer to your 20, so it's kind of a – yeah. it's like time zones and everything else is always flippy-floppy there. Yeah, that's but right. But it's, it's hot. It's hot yeah, everywhere. It's, it's good. Yeah, but this has been an exciting year. You guys have been out since you know seventies, but you guys have been doing stuff on and off ever since the very beginning. Mm-hmm. One of the things for me, though, and, and you can hopefully explain to me to the audience, because you're part of the OI movement, and, and I hope you can explain that to people. And I want people to understand where things came from, because a lot of the popular punk bands now got it from guys like you. And I want people to realize to go back to the source because <laughs> your your albums are excellent. And, you, you know, go to YouTube or they can go to iTunes, go to your site. We're going to talk of an album coming out. So there's great music that, you know, if people aren't aware of you, they need to check you out. And if they are aware of you, they need to enjoy the interview <laughs> <laughs> and see what's going on with you. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, as I say, we formed in 1979, uh, mm-hmm. the Rejects. I was 14 years old at the time. And um, wow. he was it was seventeen, yeah. And thing, things happened fairly quickly for us. I mean, we'd obviously like as a youngster, like uh, me older brothers bought um, Led Zeppelin albums, Black Sabbath, Queen, you know, Rolling Stones, ACD. Yeah. Loved all really? that. Um, still do, like you know. And I loved the every rock scene. But then um, I think it was in nineteen seventy seven. I first heard the Sex Pistols, "God Save the Queen," and. Uh, I just loved it. I just thought it, it was pure rock and roll, but it was a mm-hmm. uh, there was a poppy element to it too, and it was also right? a voice of Johnny Lydon, and uh, it's kind of then a really latch not onto the punk thing in the uh, in the English scene. Now I, I know a lot of it uh, definitely had started, you know, around New York with bands like Richard Elton and uh, the Ramones. Obviously, right. I think that was kind of the English thing was more like a, a, of a poppy thing. Than hardcore, you know, you had bands like the Buzzcocks and the Dam, the Stranglers, and uh, right, it, it was a great scene. And in 1979, we decided to form a band, and it was only me and my brother. And uh, all of a sudden, we we didn't have a drummer or anything. I had a fellow who become my brother in law. He went on uh, uh, who tried to learn to play bass, and um, we just made a lot of noise. And Gary Bushell, who was at Sounds at mm-hmm. the time, the premier punk writer. Um, we went up to meet him, blagged our way in there, and within six months of March 1979, uh, I'd say it was October, November 1979, we'd only played three gigs, and we were signed in the biggest record company in the world at the time, EMI, for lots of money. Right, you know, That's insane. So, yeah, I, I was 15 when I signed, and uh, we, we made a, a, um, a little single for an independent label called Small Wonder, in 1979, I was 14 then, and that sold, it sold really well. What you've got to remember, Sean, is in them days, there was no internet and there was, you know, no right. Facebook and all that. Everything was done through fanzines, like Sniffing Glue, the big punk one, and obviously the the major um, music papers at the time, which were Sounds, New Musical Express, Melody yeah. Maker, and they were weeklies, and people bought them like, you know, like it was their Bible. So words got out, and then for any gigs that we'd done, they was all fly posted in the world. And and London, I'm, I'm born and bred in London. In London in the seventies, it was absolutely fantastic time to grow up. You could go and watch a punk band or an every rock band any night of the week. There were so many venues. You know what I mean? You could watch Black Sabbath one night, or you could go and watch the Damned the next night, or you know, magazine the Buzzcocks, whatever. It was absolutely thriving. And it was all done by posters and it was all done by music magazines. And um, we was lucky. We, we barged in at the end of the 70s 
And then, um, you know, obviously, uh, we had working class roots. And then there was a lot of ideals of punk. You know, I know The Clash were a great band. It was very political. Yeah. And um, that was more anarchist The Pistols, great tunes. But uh, we, we we was football fans. You know what I mean? The Regis, I, I will say, you know, like football hooligans like, as well. And uh, we kind of like to the terrorist culture was the kind of thing where we looked on as punk, going over our, our team West Ham and standing on the terraces and, you know, and it, it was a great time. So we kind of uh, bought that in. Uh, that was our idea of punk, you know, singing about what you did, fighting, getting arrested by the police, going to the football, you know what I mean? It was, uh, it was just a natural thing to sing about, you know? It's crazy how intense, and you have to understand being from the other side of the pond, perhaps, like in seeing that. Mm -hmm. I'm 51, so... I'm aware yeah. of how music was before, the, obviously, the internet. And yeah. my show is trying to bring people that weren't part of the internet forward. Because mm. it feels like music, to some people, just started right when the internet happened, which is not true. Yeah. And yeah. my thing is, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Because I would get my hands on every magazine, because I love all kinds of music, if you've seen any of the guests. So yeah. I've, I've always been reaching out. Like I have stacks of, you know, whether of punk stuff, you know, prog rock, whatever. You know, I've talked to yeah. Glenn. I'll talk to any... I just a music rich musical legacy in, in Britain. Yeah. And if I could actually side step for one minute, it made me think of something I was talking to you. Back then, how big was the division to listen to different music? So it's like like you said back then, you could see Black Sabbath, you could see punk, but you also had the great glam scene and the mod scene came from there. How open yeah. was people to listening to different types of music? Was it as divided as you would feels like sometimes people are like music snobs, or was it like, yeah, I'll go see a glam thing tonight and I'll go see a punk thing? Yeah, I, I think that was very, 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 very much uh, the part of it. I mean, there were so many cultures, subcultures. I mean, if you go to the if you go to the early seventies, yeah, right, you had the, the glam thing happening in England, yeah. which was fantastic. As a kid, watching Bowie, Sweet, I uh, Tate, all them great bands, and Slade, they was absolutely loved. But they were big singles artists in Britain. But the thing was at that time, you had the hardcore like Sabbath. Purple Zeppelin, who was selling millions of records in the USA right. and playing the massive audiences, and then you also had the prog rock come along. You know, your King Crimson, Genesis, yes. yeah, yeah. And I like, I liked all of that. And then, I know, and all that is fantastic legacy music. Every single one of those are like, and then yeah. the, then throwing the punk on top yeah, of that the in the seventies. Yeah, the punk come like you know around seventy six or so. You had quite bit like the damn the Clash Generation X, the Pistols, and all that. The only thing that I didn't like about the punk epic when they come out a lot of these so called punk styles, you know, Joe Strummer <laughs> and that they were great bands, but they was faking credentials, working class credentials when they was all very middle class and saying that they hated the Rolling Stones and they hated this and that and and prog rock. To me, that was total bollocks because it's all rock and roll. And, I, you know, yeah, I like that. We wouldn't have been, you know, you go back to the 60s, you know, I was turned on by that, you know, the late 60s with, with Cream and the Small Faces, you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, the Yardbirds, the Rolling Stones, they were great bands, Pink Floyd, you know. To me, it was all part of the package and nobody could say they would have ever been there without the other. You know, mm -hmm. we can all trace it back to Elvis, the king of rock and roll. You <laughs> That's know? right. And he did. He paved the way for everybody. But what I didn't like, you, you know, was people saying, oh, we ate the Rolling Stones and we ate Led Zeppelin. These these punks in these bands who, of course, they was listening to Led Zeppelin. I mean, Steve Jones has admitted that, you know, his favourite. And, oh, yeah. and it was great. It didn't matter whether it was glam or into the, um, you know, the punk, the heavy metal, the prog. You know, then you had the mod thing and the scar wasn't really my thing, but it was a, it was absolutely tremendous, like time in the seventies. I agree with you. If it's, even if it's not my thing, I can appreciate it, and you don't have to knock it. I mean, music yeah. needs to stick together, everybody, yeah. because everyone's against yeah. you know, it's it's insane. I I, I think, but but yeah. it's important. I mean, I mean, you guys I'm, you guys were writing good songs and still do. Yeah. But I mean, they were good songs yeah. in the beginning. Mix. And you're gonna say your brother? I was just talking about yeah. call out. What a great catchy riff writer and he can yeah. write some beautiful melodies just want to throw that out there because he's not in this yeah, talk John, yeah. props he out to him very good but we was listening and i will say this and always have done to a hell of a lot of american bands from the 70s as well i mean we used to get bootlegs of the zz top albums yeah you know, uh, uh you know fandango yeah and, uh, uh, and aerosmith you know, yep. the first album, then Get Your Wings uh, and Rocks. I first heard Rocks in 76, got it on an impulse. 
before really punk and it's but really? and, and we had a massive love for boston you know what i mean we really did that and sounds so uh, there was two things that there was great bands from america i mean you know steely dan great bands and, and we loved right? all that and we was able to listen to all that obviously we wasn't as talented we were just four kids who wanted to knock out punk tunes, yeah, you know, the, the, the bands stuff. you just said though let's be honest with you steely dan in boston yeah very few people are as talented as them I mean, for God's sake, Boston built the recording studio in his basement I mean, for the no, first album. Yeah. I mean, no one's that talented. Let's listen. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. So, yeah. And then he built a little Rockman amp, but people were, you know, that little box. Right? Rock, so you could try and replicate the Tom Schultz sound. And, <sighs> and to me, it's a fantastic. It, 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 it's not about the destination. No. It, it's about the journey. Uh, uh, and that's it. And the, the journey through it, you know, being involved in music, I still read about, you know, another one of my favourite all-time bands, The Doors. And for me, that they say about punk rock, but Jim Morrison was the first punk rocker. Mm -hmm. You know, he used, to have the, he used to have the police on stage, you know. I mean, they, you know, the police used to turn up to the venue before the PA, ready to arrest him. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's all a great history from both sides of the pond. And I still find it fascinating to, to this very day, you know. His and, big uh, arrest. His big arrest yeah. was down the road from me in, in New Haven. The the song we talked about, oh, Blood on the Streets, New Haven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Peace Frog. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, down in New Haven. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, crazy. It, it, it's, it's just a fascinating, the, the ride's been brilliant, you know what I mean? And listening to the great music like that, that's come out. Although I don't listen to so much today. Yeah, I don't either. I think, you know, it's, it's funny because I think a lot of us now become, and without sounding like two old guys in a commercial, it's yeah. like it's yeah. the 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 um they do do a, like an algorithm and they do the timing and the beats and it's yeah. it's actually not even pro now it's, it's even more programmed out than just like than writing a pop perfect pop song it's literally figured out by a computer yeah, yeah that's where it's too far for me that's where you draw the line because it's yeah. got to be a human of course you do there's so much computer i mean i i love the fact i mean we was lucky to record our first album like we'd only been together seven months uh for emi and that uh, it was i remember going into a at the time, a 24 track studio. I've never seen anything like it, you know. And when they used to do an edit, you know, they'd cut the tape. Yes. You know, yep. now someone just program on the computer, I'll go, oh, we'll get rid of that, move it along, and it's gone. And for an edit, they'll cut the tape and slice. slice what was it like the first time you saw somebody do that? Because I, I went to college for that in 90, learned how to splice yeah. it. I never got yeah. good at it because it was college, because it changed digital right away. But yeah. watching somebody splice a tape oh, precisely man. and put it together and then yeah. tape it, you're like, that's not going to work. Right. Yeah. Every time yeah. you see, it, you're like, "That's not going to work." Yeah, and it's perfect. And it, it's just fascinating, you know. Yeah. What I mean, and, you know, that, that, that for me, that was the top when you could really make real rock and roll. It, mm -hmm. It's not as fun anymore getting in the studio, and I think that's why a lot of the bands from the seventies, I think, you only make an album once in a while because it's a, uh, you know, it, all the pro tools come in and and the stuff like that, and I, I just and then it's easy now. Someone can send the guitar uh, like. You know, I mean, a backing track over to somebody, and the guitarists right. do it in their bedroom, and you, you know how it goes, Sean. And yeah. I just, just got lost a, a, along the way somewhere, you know? The pure essence of rock and roll. I do. And that, that's the thing. Like, to me, like, I think anybody can be, you can record it separately, you can do it whatever you want. I encourage it if you want to write new albums all the time. If you don't, yeah. that's cool for any band. Like, I support anybody just doing their gig. The one yeah. thing that's hard is the newer musicians that are just recording them at home and doing their Instagram accounts. But yeah. haven't yet had the chance to go out on the road to do it. And this is where we go back when we talk about whether it be an yeah. Aerosmith or a Sex Pistols or any of these bands from either country going yeah. on the road and working. Because remember, you had a working yeah. album. There was no Aerosmith Platinum album when it first came out. They were just a band in a van. And yeah. they wouldn't have survived nowadays. They would not have survived nowadays. Sex and Pistols the, would not have survived these days. Yeah, I mean, they had to do like so many others. You know, you, you had to get on that road in a van. You had to sleep rough. You had to play. You had to go around the cities and earn your money and there wasn't yeah. a lot of money in no. in playing live then they always just oh you're gonna lose money like you know time you hire a van and then you know your hotels and all this and that but it's the greatest grounding it, 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 it's the only way really that it can be done that's where you learn yeah. who you are as a band when yeah. you're on the road and, and i think that's i'm sorry that's for punk punk and i think actually heavy metal a lot of heavy metal or thrash with the do-it-yourself the, the magazines and the online and sleeping on couches, that was very similar. Everyone was kind of helping each other. That was yeah. kind of the fun part of the music, the, the the groups helping each other out. It was a team spirit. Yeah, of course it was. It was always a team. We always used to have the back for each other, you know? 
Uh, and that, 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 that was a great way of doing it. You had to bet for each other. And that was it. You was a gang. And that was it. It was like us against the world, you know, when you were. Right. Oh, you had to spats between each other because you get sick of each other when you're on the road. But it was, uh, it, you know. It it, 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 it it was a great I mean, it was a great grounding it's like doing your apprenticeship you know mm-hmm. at this game and um uh, we we was lucky in that fact you know that, that them things started to get in the way you know with the football thing and there, there was a lot of violence started happening at the gigs but you you were a boxer though right you're your boxer so it was yeah. kind of that's yeah. kind of in your culture right i mean that culture i mean like you're kind of comfortable with violence than some people like somebody like me who's a non-fighter Getting popped in the face. I took martial arts and I got used to being yeah. flipped and thrown around. It took a while. Yeah, yeah. But once you're yeah. used to it, you're like, all right, I can take a hit. But before yeah. you take a hit the first time, you're like, oh, it's the worst thing ever. Like your world would end. Take a hit once, and then you're like, you're like, oh, I'll live. Yeah. That, that, and then amplify that for you with, by a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was I, I always one of the boxers a, a kid in East London, where we was from in the top part of the East London. It was a very tough place, and there, there was a lot of boxing clubs. Mm-hmm. Around everywhere, so that, that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I was an amateur, and uh, I had oh, thirty nine fights. I'm I'm thirty one of them, but I box. I represented England at youth level. I won some titles, national titles, different things. But then when the punk was colliding, you know, I was fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. I, I had to make the choice what I wanted. I'd never have made it as a professional. Yeah, fighter. yeah, but good good timing. Let me see. Look at those ears. Those ears are fine. You look good. Yeah. You got out just in time. You got out just in time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just in time. But I may actually, I still, I, 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 I still train. I, I still I'm, box. Well, that's the best exercise. Sparring with twenty-one-year-olds and getting knocked all around the ring, but I just love it. You know, it was the uh, once it's in you, know, it's a thing that that never that never leaves you. You know, and it's an important yeah. thing if you're playing on the stage now. I'm, you know, for me, it's the fitness. I do a lot of running. I play tennis, boxing, training, and that's also I can be lively on stage. I need to get around the stage and. To me, it's all still part of showmanship, mm-hmm. you know. I think keeps you got... sharp mentally. Yeah. I think people don't realize how much boxing is is a chess match. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, that, I don't think people is. realize that. Like, you're not stupid. If you're a good boxer, you're not stupid. You might not be good at some things, but you're yeah. not stupid. No, that's right. Uh, uh, and that 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 stood in good stead for what what was to come. Going out on the road in that was very violent at times. You, you know, the late seventies got at gigs. You know, you had big skinhead followings and there was a lot of left wing, right wing stuff, which we was never into any of that. So we just stood our ground against everybody. And then, you know, this thing come along, which was, um, which they called it oil music, which I I was never comfortable with. I always thought of us as a 70s punk band. And that Mm -hmm. was some, uh, uh, you know, I I, I remember I told the story of oil, Sean, uh, and what it really was is that, we, we played a gig in 1980 and it was reviewed by a music paper. And they slacked us, they really give the band a lot for the gig, but that was funny. And they said the only three words that the singer could muster between songs was oi, oi, oi. And we thought that was funny. So we wrote a song <laughs> called oi, oi, oi. And then this got, and then all of a sudden it, it become like a movement. And I'm no fucking god of movements. That is how it become. That is irony. That is awful. Yeah, we're just a rock and roll band. And then when it come, you know, the 80s, uh, you know, we got sacked by EMI. That, that, that was down to an incident uh, outside where there was a fight outside EMI and uh, it turned out a plainclothes policeman, we didn't know he was, was involved and uh, he, he got smacked about a bit. And then... Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Let's I laugh was, about it now. <laughs> Court cases. I ended up at the old Bailey for it, and then EMI said, "Oh, you're bad boys. We've had your four albums out of you. Now you've got to go." And that's when we decided. Then we thought, "Well, we really the punk thing was dying. Really, really was in '81 in England, and um, we stuck where roots. And we we wanted to be uh, an every rock band, and we made mm-hmm. an album, the Wild Ones, with Pete Way, the bass player of UFO. He was great. Uh, 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 who produced it? And we aimed right up there. In, we we went right out to try and get the ACDC early, Aerosmith and a fabulous Scottish band called Nazareth. Who were real. Yep. And we went for that. And uh, we kind of pulled it off. But once we did that, we left the old audience behind. And there was no management. We're going to get you touring with Def Leppard and this, that. And you have a load of crap, a load of bullshit. And it never happened. 
So we just faded away for a few years, and uh, uh, as you do, you know, with no money. But that's the way it is. It, it wasn't all about the money. It, it, it was just about, you know, being into the game and being able to survive. But as you know, Sean, there's so many sharks and con men like pimps. Every, everyone is. Everyone is. It seems like there's... Uh, nasty, nasty people. I look back at the contracts that we signed for EMI. We never saw, you know, I've got gold, silver discs and all that, and we had chart records, but there was never any money at the end of it. And it just come to a point uh, and the, the ex-management had us right over, really took everything and then told us we was in debt to the record company. All the same old shit. You know, so it's good now because we're self-managed and everything. everyone does it now. You, you know that, and and, oh. and everyone makes more money. They say, and, and I'm sorry, we keep cutting out. That I think, and I talk to a lot of artists, and the best thing they say is, "I had this like you," and they're like, "You know what? I manage myself now. I probably yeah. do. I don't know a fourth of the business, the sale, whatever, but I get a hundred percent of the profits. I make more oh. money now than then. You know, the problem yeah. is they were banks. No yeah. one was watching any of these guys. They were in charge of making their own rules. There's no regulation." So yeah, every single artist that was a creative, interesting yeah. because they're focusing on their art and their music. Yeah. It's punk yeah. is still art, rock is still art. Art yeah. is being creative. People that are yeah. in that mindset generally are not a left and right brain. Yeah, and what happens is if someone says something at at that, you're like, "All right, I'll take you at your word. Why should I not? Why should I have to be in this world? Where I don't trust you coming out of the gate, especially young." And one thing yeah. I said to people is. You, you started young. So you, first off, I'm going to say this. You guys did not always look like a punk band. You even dressed like rockers, even younger on. Even singing the videos, you had your own style that was not totally punk looking. You sounded a little bit different. That's what yeah. I always got. Yeah. But there was yeah. no college. There was no school. Like if say, I say nowadays, say somebody nowadays is, gets out of college, right? And yeah. all of a sudden they're like doing well for a couple of years, and that's their yeah. career. And they're 22. Yeah. And then all of a sudden their boss goes, can't do that career anymore. Go find something else. Oops, that's, yeah. like, that's like rock and roll losing your record label. Yeah, it, it, come exactly. in. What do you do all of a sudden as a young person? That's your career. Yeah, yeah well, that was it. I remember our manager, fellow Tony Golden, who had signed, uh, he'd become our manager when we got the record deal with EMI. And uh, uh, we'd had, I remember when the four albums were done and EMI sacked us over the incident, we signed with NEMS Records, which was yet to make the heavy metal album. And the fellow's name was Patrick Meehan, who used to manage Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. at one point and uh, he paid us this was november 1981 pound advance which was a lot of money back in 1981 and then i remember we was making this album then a few months later the manager i was 17 at the time the manager rung up rung me up and said all the money's gone you'll have to go and get a job i'm 17 i said this is my job no money's gone right i went on for social service uh, like social security where i was getting about 18 pounds a week it just took everything and, and that was it so that was when you start thinking i need to do something else you know i'd always i always would have survived and i no, wasn't what no, i'm saying it, it, it's you're not prepared for it though like people expect this I'm music prepared. rock star thing to be different than what it is and yeah. even black sabbath if you didn't now know black sabbath may have had money fronted for them they got yeah. screwed now, later on of course they got to recoup it but in those days Yes. They got screwed. I mean, luckily, they, they survived and got to make the big money. Luckily, Sex Pistols got to come do a, a, a tour where they make some money finally in the past couple of years. I was glad to see yeah. them play those big gigs. They had the money coming to them. Everyone else got paid. Yeah, Glenn, definitely. Glenn and the boys needed to get paid for what they did. Yeah, yeah and why shouldn't they uh, got paid? Oh, yeah. uh, that's it. it. At the end of the day, it is rock and roll. But it, as you're saying, Sean, it is a business, you know, and you yeah. can't shelf up. For something, I used to get. Uh, you still get now. Some punks go, oh, oh, the money, money. What you're getting paid? I mean, we don't earn fortunes, but of course I'm going to get paid. I go yeah. up there and give for a show. It don't matter whether you're a juggler, a comedian, an actor. If that's what you do, it's a, it, 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 and it's all entertainment. It, 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 that's what it's about, you know. I mean, it is an art form, and you've got to get up there and deliver. And of course, you want to be paid for it. But the good right. thing is now is that you're in control of the money that comes in. You're not paying, you know, a manager 25%, and but really, in effect, he's taking 75% and probably the whole lot. So it's, yeah. that, that, that's the good thing with our rich I mean, You guys now. have survived always, and your albums have always been consistent. I've always heard different types of music in it, and that says a lot that we're talking yeah. now about a, a new album coming. I mean, this is insane, 77, 79 you know, just like we're not, we're like outer space days. We're, we're, you know, we're going to be getting laser guns and spaceships pretty soon, right? That Elon Musk has his way. And we're still talking about 
punk slash rock and roll now on, on a yeah. computer, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, who, who would have thought all them years ago? That's right. That it should be talking about it. I mean, the album we've just done a uh, power grab, but we recorded it in the COVID period. If once a few restrictions were let go, we mm -hmm. could get in the studio for one weekend, uh, wrote songs, and then we could record free, get the backing tracks. And it was about a fourteen-month process. But I wanted to do one more album, but I wanted like a mix of what everything we've done over the last few years. I mean, there's some like punkish tracks on it. There's rock tracks. There's a couple of really heavier tracks, you, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like metal tracks. Uh, 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 and that's it. I mean, I don't always believe that you've got to do everything in uniform. Oh, let's make a punk album for the sake of making it. I've done that. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, let's make a every rock album for the sake of making it. You do them things when you're young. But now you write, and, uh, you know, to me, it's just rock However it comes out. If it comes out punk, it comes out metal, whatever comes out, it's just music. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm glad you have a new album out. It would be a shame if you didn't. I, hopefully you have a couple more in you. I, do you guys, do you have, do you get inspired? Or do you have to say, all right, I'm going to sit down with Mick and we're going to, he has some riffs. Or are you like, I, you have ideas all the time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you, you know, I'm like, if I know we're going for something, you know, I, I can get ideas. I, I, you know, I'll bring them and say, right, this is your hook line, this is the chorus, or, or, you know, who he brings to me. And we work it around like that, you know, me and Mick do the writing. And then uh, it, 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 it comes together. We have our disagreements, but there'd be, you know, maybe. You're supposed to, your brothers in, in rock and roll. I think yeah. that's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, disagreements about it, but you know, we always come uh, to the, the the right thing. I mean, you always get two or three outtakes on an album. You know what I mean? And and you think, well, they don't make the cut. That's fair enough. So uh, we'll bin them. I think the secret is very hard. I think back the good days. You know, when people used to do ten tracks on an album. Like, for instance, if you listen to Rocks by Aerosmith, it's about mm -hmm. thirty minutes. I think the whole thing, ten, eleven songs, yeah, pretty quick, yeah. Uh, absolutely fantastic but then you started getting this thing with, with cds coming out replacing the vinyls it was like four, you've got to do 14 15 songs on an album and in the end five or six of them songs are fucking crap anyway you know what i mean you're just filling in oh well we'll put this on there and put that on there right uh you know with this one i think we, we stripped it down to about 11 songs 12 about 35 minutes of music and I, I, I think that's the way I, I prefer going back to doing that, you know what I mean, than overloading with 15, 16 songs. And people put a CD, it's the easiest thing just to go, I don't like that, and fast forward it to the next song, you right. know. With, with albums, you know, it was different. You used to have to lift the needle and try and put it on, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but it just seemed a better way, I'd say, like, you know, a lot of the great bands did, like, 10 songs maximum on an album. And I think that that's enough, really. It's hard. It's hard because I, I love vinyls and I have vinyls back to yeah. Yes and punk bands and stuff. It depends on the album and the production and everything. Yeah. And there's certain albums I won't buy because A, because of the production or B, because of the songs. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. got to be... A, I don't want to be getting up or, or suffering through some really bad songs, especially some bands had their bad, like, a couple of years in, those drug years where they were just, like, putting out albums for money. Uh, I don't uh, want that on vinyl. No one needs to sit through, like, four or five of those songs. No, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, uh, and this is, yeah, the, the other thing as well, we're, we're, we're playing live nowadays, it, 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 it doesn't matter. It's, say, for an example, like the Stones, or even say somebody, Bon Jovi, for instance, whether you like them or not. It's a, right. But they bring, a new al they could make a, 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 bring a new album out. Now, once people come to see them, they're in, in the arena or the old touring or wherever they're playing, people love the nostalgia. Now, yeah. Go to see Bon Jovi, they want to hear, like, you give love a bad name, living on a prayer. You know, same with the Rolling Stones, Satisfaction, Sympathy for the Devil, whatever. Once, they tell me, go, right, we're going to play two songs off of our new album. People lose interest and, and they piss off outside to have a cigarette or they go up the bar. And that, that that's that's really one of the harder things now about yeah. playing songs live. You know, it's uh, because album... Bands at the beginning, when they was hungry, you used to do an album every year. You know, mm -hmm. some did two in, in, in one year. It was album tour, album tour, album tour. So you could play new stuff live. But now, where people, the great rock bands and the older bands, you make an album once, you know what I mean, every eclipse. You know? Yeah. And people going, really, for the nostalgia, 
and a lot of them don't buy in, uh, buying a new album. Well, what you about know? your fans? And I'm going to follow up with something else because I was just talking to Jorgen from Die Krups, right? And yeah. he puts out a lot of different types of music and fresh music. And he says, actually, for him talking about the old music and stuff, he he has more people wanting to hear the, more than new music, even the classics, because he has a really? newer... And I've never heard this before because most bands get stuck because I love new music. I already have the album. I would love to hear you do it new live because I already heard you do it before the old one. You know what I'm saying? But not yeah. everyone's like me. A lot of people yeah. want the, the old stuff because that's yeah. three minutes of a memory of their past that you're giving them. So and on some level, as a band, it's a gift. that You you can create this moment. But on another level, as a creative artist, you want to do some more new music to keep it fresh. What do you yes. do? The fact that Jurgen says that he's got people in bigger songs now than the classics that people go and the younger audience coming in, a mixture, is, yeah. is really like the perfect storm for an artist. Yeah. 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 It, it, and that, that, that's straight. You, you know, I, I, I'd love it. I, I'd like to believe that, that, that that's, that is the way that it goes. And that's great. If, he, if he's able to do that. I mean, I love like new music, but it's, yeah. it's very, the, the, the bands that, you know, I, I was in who was a kid and still in who now. That that they very, very, very rarely produce anything. You know, and a lot of the bands are, are not around anymore. You know, to actually do it. I mean, when you think of big acts in rock, right? Where are where where are the new great big acts? I mean, the stadium acts. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I'm hard pressed, and yeah. you know, I've got a, quite a music knowledge, and I don't. Feel there's a lot. I feel there's a lot of hard, up and coming, new generation mm -hmm. of rockers that are working hard and staying clean. Yeah. They still look rock and yeah. roll, are staying clean and being polite and working hard. So I yeah. hope. Yeah. Um, but breakouts that aren't contrived and more in the pop world, like like rock stuff or punk or anything we're talking about now, is yeah. it's dying out. It's I don't it, know it, who's going to be filling the stadiums with with loud guitars yeah. or well, kicking over drum sets. Uh, uh, that's why. Right. I mean, when you see, I mean, bands like Kiss. Are done now. I mean, yep. uh, Black stuff are done for now. Really yep. deep purple. I mean, Aerosmith can't. Uh, you know, they haven't got long left. Steve Tyler's always in the rehab. One of the greatest stadium bands, Van Halen. Obviously, yep. Eddie's passing no more. And you think, well, who? who, who I mean, AC DC are at the end of the line. Guns yep. and Roses yep. have made a pair of those. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, he, it's a, a weird comeback for him. Yeah, they they yep. had a comeback, but Bon Jovi. <laughs> Problems. What, happened great, what happened to the the great frontman, the great rock stars? You know what I mean? Who, 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 who could command the stage? You know what I mean? Like your Jaggers, your Freddie Mercury, your Tyler's, your Dave Lee Roths. Where you know? Even what I mean? Johnny Johnny Rotten early before he got all political and crazy lately. You know, you you, you wanted dangerous. You wanted you know you wanted what's yeah, going on yeah. with people? You know, there yeah. I don't see anybody sticking out as your as a frontman or a front woman no. or a front person. No, that's that's no. going to be engaging even. We even had, look in the 80s, if you're not even talking rock, you're talking like, a, like even like Boy George or like anybody from the pop bands, they all stood out. Like, or, yeah, or even uh, Men at Work. Yeah. Like, all these bands had something that stood out different. Exactly. And you're right. Uh, 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 what you're saying, that even like, yeah. Uh, Boy uh, George was a frontman. You knew who he was. We all know who he is. We can talk about him. Yeah, yeah. That, they all stood out. But it just don't seem there's any character or, or I don't know, fun or, or, or but, you know, I, I used to. Love watching, you know, certain frontmen. I mean, I, you know, even watching Peter Gabriel when he was in Genesis as yeah. a kid, I was fascinated. You know what I mean? He had a big flare on his head. And I know, was just he, listening he, yesterday to, to the, the Liam on, on Broadway, right? And, and I was just listening to thinking, yeah. I, if I ever got to speak to him, I would like to say, what mindset, like, what yeah, audience but, were you going to dress like a yeah. giant flower? Like, where were you? And not even being yeah. funny about it, like, what were you yeah. thinking on a creative yeah. artistic level as a grown man dressed as a flower to not realize? Uh, what you were putting out there was exposing yeah. yourself because it seems ridiculous. Yeah. But then again, to be an artist, he knows what he was doing. And, and to put it out there anyhow? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, brilliant. Fact, yeah, to put it out. The fact is that 40 or 50 years later, we're still we're, talking about right. it. And uh, how uh, punk uh, rock is that? How rock and dangerous is that to dress up like a flower when you, as a grown person, against what people are doing? Like, that's doing your own thing. You might think it's silly. That's rock. Yeah. That's doing what you want to do. Yeah, and rock was theatre, you know what I mean? I remember seeing, I was frightened, I think it was 1972, I see Addis Cooper on top of the pops when I was about eight years old, doing school yeah. out, and he went in a sword with all that crazy makeup on and all that. Oh, wow, this is brilliant. It could give a kid a nightmare, or it could give a kid and say, I'll tell you what, I'd like to grow up and do that, you know? And the yeah. music 
fantastic. It was brilliant. It was good. It still is good. Actually, you know, what's funny is he's still he's one of the few ones um, yeah. who's going out. Alice is still out there. Alice, I don't know how many more years, but he's still putting out good music. Yeah, legend. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and he's putting out music and uh, and good music and 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 that's good. You, you know, look, uh, as you say, look, uh, long live to them people because. As I say, it's nearly at the end, you know. There's not going to be many left, you know. They're dropping like flies with old age and that. And it's uh, it would have been nice for something coming up underneath that that you could relate to. But I'm like you, Sean. I just just don't see it, you know. What I mean, or hear it, you know. It's not think, nothing's there. And you know, and TikTok and this, that, and the other. It, it was we had one one show first of all, which was Top of the Pops on a Thursday night which was the chart show, and it, it, it was very – but that run for years and years, and it was half an, half an hour on a Thursday night where you would hopefully get to watch two acts, like your heroes, on, on TV, yeah. which is fantastic. And then 1971, they had the old grey whistle test, which mm -hmm. was here, which was a fantastic show because they, they bring – but it was on late, so I was about seven years old. It weren't till – later that I could watch that and the bands you know I mean that, that was coming on there you know from they had everybody from Alice Cooper you know to like Captain Beefheart you know to the Ramones it, it was American British Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers everybody you know played uh, on the great the old and radio. luckily we can hear people please google that stuff because you can still find it now on YouTube and everything else <laughs> go back and see all stuff because I'm going to tell you when I grew up and I used to hear how great radio was over there and how mixed everything it was i was envious so finally when i could go back and listen to it yeah yeah it, 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 it's fantastic to go back and listen as i said it's an education in life and i wouldn't swap i'm 58 now and i wouldn't swap being in any other era than coming through that you know having you know being you know just to be able to catch on to the late yeah. 60s you know uh, about a few years right. I'm, fi i'm 51 so i'm right in that window of like you're not going to get past. It's, it's a perfect time. Yeah, it was perfect time, and and it it, it it was fantastic. You know, to grow up like in that rock and roll time through so many genres, subcultures, and, and so much that you so much that you loved. You know, so many different musical styles, and um, you know, to me, it weren't the fashion; it was the music. But I'll get mm -hmm. the fashion that comes with it. That's fair enough. You it's, know? it's 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 dressing on an ice cream. You can have a nice cake, but it's nice to have some frosting and some decorations. It's fun. Yeah, of it is. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, but that, if there's that, nothing underneath that frosting, you're like, I'm not going to have that cake again. You know, you want to have, you yeah. know, something underneath that frosting. Yeah. <laughs> One time I'd be like, oh, okay, it's a little too sweet. You know, yeah. but you're so, but you starting so young now. I mean, so, and you survived through all this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come through it. It started at 14. We had the world at our feet at the beginning, and it was quickly taken away. Then he, 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 he just get on with life. I mean, there was a time when we we didn't do anything for about eight or nine years. We just said we've had enough, you know. Then I think it was about 1999, we just oh, come back, we'll have another go. And we've been lucky, very, very lucky to play all over the world, you know. I've played him all over the place, you know, from Russia to Japan to Australia to even playing in El Salvador, you know what I mean? That's like, very cool. But, you know... Uh, Costa Rica, Mexico. I've been, I've been very, very lucky. We've gone around the world, you know, not um, fortunes, but it's not about that and seen some great places. No, if, but to be able to go around the world and, and not have to pay for that, like it paid for yeah, itself. Like you got, you're like a sailor. Yeah, like yeah, that's a lot of experience. Very, 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 very lucky and privileged to uh, have been able to do and seen what I've seen. And if the big fella in the sky said to me next week, like, that's the end for you. Like, you're not going to be on this earth tomorrow. I could turn around and say, thank you, what a great ride. Absolutely brilliant. And, and I believe it, 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 it's a privilege. But in this game, I think if you want to stay, you know, I'm not never preached to anybody or anything like that, but I think a, a, a great thing is to stay away from the drugs, which is... Mm -hmm. you, no, you it's, know, I agree. It, it's... Yeah, it, it's the number one. I mean, and as a band as well, us personally... We do not drink before any show. It's all about the show. There's no alcohol is permitted for any of the four band members. You get on play that show, drink what you want afterwards, but it's all about the paying people. It doesn't matter whether it's 200, 2,000 or, or whatever. They pay their money. Mm -hmm. They deserve to get a show. And we're lucky after 43 years. I never thought it. Anybody would still be coming to see us. So it's, you know. And you do put the energy. I mean, luckily, because of YouTube, I've seen you play 
and, and, and professional stuff, but all on YouTube and phone cameras. I'd seen you play smaller clubs yeah. and bigger clubs recently, past couple of years, with the same energy. Yeah, I mean, always the same energy. It doesn't matter where you go, you still got people. I mean, when we played, uh, when we first started, I would have done anything to have played a show to get one gig, and we got our first gig, and I think about ten people showed up. But I was chuffed, <laughs> and I think it was about fifty pence to get in. But I was chuffed. I couldn't believe that people had actually. That was like living your dream. People had paid to come and see you, and I don't think that should be any different. You should be lucky out of forty odd years yeah. that people still come through. It's the fantastic. Door. I mean, and club, and you, big stadium, that a big you know festival. It doesn't matter. You, you know? sound good too. I mean, you guys haven't sa- you, you, your sound hasn't changed. You sound good. I mean, so actually, we're talking about this. So you're actually talking about doing less touring, and you have an album. So this is actually good good tie in right here. Like, let's talk about your touring changing now. Yeah, touring. I mean, we've, we've been doing a lot of clubs, you know, and a lot of we go to certain places, you know, in the UK and that, and you do a twelve day tour and stuff like that, you know, with the clubs. And I think if you want to extend the longevity of the band. Uh, that it's time to scale down a bit on that. We're full out this year and we're full out next year and we'll still be playing the club scene and that. But I think come 2020, 2024, we'll be looking just to play one-off festivals, like just do festivals, not so much the touring. I mean, people getting older, Vince, the bass player, he, he, he's 64. The brother, mm-hmm. Mickey's coming up 62. I'm 58. And I, in case something happened to one of us right. as well, I'd rather do it on our terms and somebody be taken away and you think, shit, that's the end of the band now. And we never got to, it'd be good to get through to the end of next year. And then think, well, if we're all still intact, we just play the festivals now. Hopefully we might get to play some bigger festivals, you know, after that. It's just a club tour and I think we'll have to after next year will be the end of it, you know. It's, it's hard. It's hard as you get older. Yeah, it's harder as you get older. And I think you've got to, um, you, you know, sometimes you can overplay your hand, Sean. Uh, and, uh, and I definitely believe to keep the band fresh and because we non-stop gig it's non-stop 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 you know and it's uh, it'd be good just right. to uh, you can't actually just... take away from your value that's the thing now here in the US a lot of bands are flying out for the these big festival type things yeah. and not doing the weekly thing is because if you if they know you're going to come into town again next year I'll yeah. do it next time so in a way you're you're, you're over marketing yourself by saturating yeah, yeah. the market yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's so many, the thing is as well, there's so many festivals now. You used to look in England years ago and, and there'd be about four or five different festivals. You always had that, uh, oh, that, that Glastonbury, but you had the Isle of Wight Festival and Donington Monsters of Rock. That was about it, three or four, Reading, about four of them. Now, you look, there's a, there's a festival every week. There's this festival and that festival and a different one and the Happy Valley Festival, et cetera, et cetera. And the, there's just loads of them all, all vying, you know, for, yeah. the, for the same kind of market. And there's there's not many punk festivals. There's Rebellion, which is great, which we're playing in August in Blackpool in England. Every year that happens. And the, the calling gigs, uh, Scotland calling, North East calling, which is good. You know, it, they're just a one-day festival. And, you know, you've still got bands, what's left of them, like the UK subs, the Buzzcocks, the Rejects, yep. and all that, playing them, which is... um. It's a good thing, but it is, you've got to be very careful with it because a lot are really, really, really looking old now. And and I don't want to get to that point if we get there and we look ridiculous and you're not doing it. And and for me, it's the energy. I train yeah. hard to do what I do. I'm, I'm, I like to think as an ultimate professional because it's what people do. You know, I do the hard yards, the running and, and the training and all that, but that is so I can get around the stage. That ain't always going to be. And once you take that out of the quote, then it, it's like I couldn't just stand there with a microphone. I feel I was robbing me punters, you know. It, 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 it wouldn't be right. So, you know, there's life in the old dog yet. But I think we'll know when that time is, you know, you have to yeah. be to and say, look, be honest with you, it's not cutting it anymore. And I, I think it's always the big, you know what I mean, to accept that. And that's hard for anybody who's been in the game for many years, you know? Well, I, I think keeping the one-offs as long as you guys can do it, it will always keep your foot in the game. And at least yeah, you guys could go out on a high note also with this this album. At least one album. Yeah. Maybe you may have another one in you later on. There might be another one in, in a share. This goes well because I, I think there's one thing. It, it, 
you would know this as well, Sean. You, you write music. If you've been making music or writing music for years and years and years and years, it's a very, very hard thing just to say, I'm never, ever going to write right. anything anymore. You know what I mean? There's different things I'd like to do. I, I'd like to, you know, I was thinking, you know, uh, uh, even when my brother met, just to do like, you know, a four, like four songs, like just called Gegas, like the two brothers, just a, but really art back and strip it back to the old blues day, you know, mm-hmm. like back to like three and stuff like that. You know, just do a four track EP and I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Like, harmonica blowing and going back to doing some blue stuff just for four songs like, just, just to say that i've done it, it it's another thing if it's no good it's no good but i think they're the challenges that keep you you, you going to say well i'd like to do this and because i'm like you and listen to so much so many different bands you know what i mean and there's little bits that you want to take out of each one yeah you know? there's that, just too much i couldn't imagine ever stopping just doing music i mean some people no. Oh, like I don't want to do music because it's not worth it financially, and I get that. Maybe not putting out records or doing it whatever big ways, but if you're yeah. an artist that always just writes songs, yeah, yeah, you still course. want to write songs no matter what you do because that's just yeah. who you are. Yeah, it, it's who you are, and, and it's just a natural thing to do. And it'd be nice to recall. As I say, no, nobody knows how long's left in, in this game, and there's been a lot of good people fallen by the wayside. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just old age. It happens to everybody, and. And, and nothing lasts forever. Right. But, no, what, the but real, you get one shot at this. This it. Most you know? people always say, "I can write." I may, I may go back. I've only had to talk to one person who says, yeah. "I'm not going to write another song. I'm done with music." One yeah. person, yeah. Well, and I, and he, and I'm like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, yeah. "I'm done. I'm done." Fish, former of Marillion. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he's put his time in. So bless him. Oh, but he's 100 really? percent done. He's like, "This is it. This is my last tour. I'm going. He's going to write books now." He's yeah. done. There'll be no no changing for him, and and good for him. But I was like, really? And he's like, yep. Yeah. I was like, you sure? <laughs> he's like, yeah. yep. Yeah, amazing. What a talented man. You know what I mean? And uh, mind you, maybe when he's writing his books, he said that you never know. Five That's what ten. I said. But he's like, he looked at me. He's like, nope. And I'm not. Who might have question him? Because he knows he knows him, not me. Yeah, of course he does. Yeah, and this, you know, you you got to admire someone like that and the honesty that they show. He's been there, done it, and he just yeah. thought, well. well I, I think he feels that. like he has nothing else to add, and he has a ton of yeah. stories that he wants to do. But he feels like he nothing he can he wants to do inspires him musically. Yeah, that's that's fair. And enough. I respect that. But it's funny because I've never heard anybody say hundred yeah. percent done, except that's for right. him. Finished. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Good luck to him, and that's good. And I hope the future brings him happiness. And it, oh. he's good. It, uh, if he's at peace with himself with that, then that's fine. That's, that's great. But it's just yeah. weird to hear a musician be like, I'm like, are you sure? You've been a musician your whole life to be like, never yeah. anything. He's like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, God bless you for being so honest and so like, I'm done. Like, yeah. not angry, yeah. no nothing. Just, I've done yeah. that part of my life and I'm ready to write books. And I'm like, well, I'll check out your next book then, I guess, because, yeah. you know, good, good for you. Well, there's not a lot of money in books, but there you go. <laughs> How much money is there in music lately, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's no money being creative is what it is. That's the whole thing. Um, yeah. So yeah. let's let's. I do want to tell people you have an album coming out. Yeah, yeah. Talk so yeah, rap is the title with the album. It's out on Cadiz Music, the Cadiz label, and it comes out September the seventeenth, and that's a uh, vinyl and uh, CD that'll be out. And uh, hopefully uh, the rejects. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we've got a lot of gigs coming up, but hopefully next year, what we really like to do is come to the states and play. You know, what I mean, that'll be awesome. The end of the year, I'd love to come to America and uh, we've I'd love to see you guys. Two years, you know, and we did have things uh, in the pipeline that were, that were booked, but then the COVID kind of uh, put paid to a lot of that, and we've not been able to really reschedule or get anything done. But we're hoping next year that you, you know, what I mean, there's a time frame, hopefully in May or June next year yeah. when we can come back, you know, what I mean, or even next year, the fall of next year, September, October. I, I hope so. I mean, it's COVID it's slowly opened up. Even in my area up in New England, people aren't going that deep. The tours are still, to me, looking yeah. at the big picture, it feels like there's still skeleton like tours where they're kind of just touching because yeah. I think everyone's afraid to really put their hands yeah. out to everything because stuff gets canceled so fast. Yes, so no one's yeah. gone full. It's, 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 it's people feel like they're hitting just parts of my state. Like it's not really saturating it. Like it's still two, three hour drive to see somebody. Yeah. You're like, come on. Like people used yeah. to come all the time. And now yeah. it's yeah. weird still. The fear. And that, that has happened very, very, very much in, in the UK. I mean, we went out 
last November, December on about 15 dates. Then there was a new strain, Omicron or something, and people were buying tickets, and but not even turning up at the venue. People had bought tickets. And I've done still... that before too. I've done that before yeah. recently. Now I'm a couple now, last year. It was just too much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and the club scene, that is another factor in the decision. It, 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 like, you know, to so, uh, after next year, no more clubs because the clubs are struggling. A lot of the venues have gone under mm-hmm. because of the COVID thing, and, and they can't. And it's it, very much Sean. People are not as you say, Sean. Where you, people are not turning out. They're not yeah. doing it. You know what I mean? Everybody's very wary. You know, so it's um like it, even if I could go, I didn't want to catch anything and bring it home to my mother-in-law who's you know yeah. eighty-five yeah, this, or whatever. Like I'm like I yeah. can take it and I can rock out and I'll take a chance and I'll wear a mask and I've had my shots and I'll follow the rules to see a show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But what if I do get it and somebody else that isn't as strong gets it from me? I don't want to be yeah. that guy. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, and that's it. the most it, it's stopping a lot of people are not going, like, you know, turning out to the venues. And how long that can go on for, I don't know. The festivals seem okay. Yeah. They seem all right. But indoors, it just seems people are not really going for it, you know? But, but, you know, it's not that bad. Sometimes wearing masks and not being around those germs right now. I've kind of enjoyed that, I'll be honest with you. People are dirty. Yeah. People are always coughing. People <laughs> people only wash their own hands. And I like the best is people that maybe weren't aware of their coffee breath. And you're like, uh, tic-tac, right? <laughs> I met a lot of them, yeah. Right? And now they got their mask and they get to breathe in their own coffee breath. <laughs> yeah. That's karma right there. That's, you know. <laughs> Hopefully the mask is off. Everyone's aware of it. They're chewing gum and stuff. Cause I'm like, we need to learn some lessons. Yeah. Coffee breath. <laughs> we at least take that. That's a takeaway from COVID is to wear a mask and learn to brush your teeth more. But yeah. that's, that's just me. <laughs> it was I, I don't blame you for, you know, the clubs not doing the clubs anymore because of that. And, but you know, I want to, I'm going to put all the links for everybody for all your stuff. Like I always do underneath the show uh, on the YouTubes and yeah. of course on, on a podcast, which is on all the podcast platforms. So people listen and then go down and click, go to the website, support yeah, them on brilliant. the website, Facebook, on YouTube, check out their yeah. videos, check out their old stuff. They're get excited for the new stuff. Check out brilliant. the merch, the merch. You got some great shirts, yeah. fun shirts, yeah. buy the shirts, support the merch. That's what the show's about is supporting the bands. Anyhow, you know, yeah. You know, now, much appreciated, mate. You know what I mean? It's been fantastic, like, you know, to talk up with you and uh, got a vast knowledge of, of rock music. And it, I, it, have, it, I it, do. You know what I mean? And they're the good things that it's always great to talk about the music, you know what I mean? Which is. We, we which just is met fun. each other and you can talk to somebody. One thing about music is a true music lovers, not yes. just not just like a whatever. Yeah, yeah. With music cool. lovers, when you have a history of music, you can talk to someone and it's almost like your best friends or your mates or your whatever it is, because you have that same timeline. And and people say, and you say, what did I just want to say? Is say working class? I don't think yeah. I've ever known any musician to be like coming from some rich background and becoming a rock star. Like every musician I know is pretty much working class. Like yeah. everybody on some level, to become a musician, you have to have a struggle, a challenge. It's like a good story. You have to have an arc to the story, a challenge to get there. If you have everything, how are you going to yeah. get to there? You want to start here to get to here. If you're here, yeah. that's not a story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's right, yeah. The arcs there, uh, uh, and every, you know, as I say, it's been it's been, a, it's been a good ride. It has. I don't want it to stop just yet. You know what I mean? I'll get off the ride, but yeah, it's been a good ride. No, but and, you can uh, pace yourself. This is. I always like to say this yeah. is like the last, not a lap, as in like a quick lap. This is your at this point in your life. This is a probably your, your young stage. You're breaking out, and then you have your stage when you like the band. You 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 slug it out, and people yeah. know you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Then you're at the third stage where you're like, okay. And Rolling Stones have been doing their third stage now for about 50 years. <laughs> so there's no date, there's no time stamp, you know, on yeah. this third stage. This is just the stage where you're like, yeah, we are who we are. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. We don't have to beat anybody. We don't have to yeah. listen to anybody. Right. We're just us, and we're going to go and do our thing and enjoy yeah. us while we're still doing it. That's your third stage. That's where you are right now. There's no rules. But well, and it's, you know, it's been a, it's been a long road to get to that stage, and it is good, yes. yeah, we- enjoy it this is who we are this is what we do and uh you know hopefully it continue for a few more most years people yet. don't get to this stage they usually get the first stage and they crash out and they you know right. we've been very lucky sean very lucky and uh i, I appreciate that you know what i mean and it, yeah. it's nice for people like yourself to invite us on the shows and still you know what i mean it's relevant and, and wave and the flag I, when your album comes out i want to check it out and we'll we'll get back if you want to come back on we'll talk about your album and promote it when you get done okay 
one hundred percent, Sean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, when the album's out in a couple of months' time, we yeah. can come back and we'll do another one, mate. It'd be I love lovely it. Lovely to talk to you. Really okay. fantastic. You know. Excellent. I want to thank you for being on the show, man. Thank you very much, Sean, and all the people out there in the USA. I hope we can come over there next year and we can play. Hope That'd so be too. okay. That really would be brilliant. Cool.